esteemed advisory group member, member and supporting member of Asia CCUS Network. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon in Asia and also good morning from Europe time. And a warm welcome to the fourth Asia CCUS Network Knowledge Sharing Conference organized by Asia CCUS Network in partnership with Clean Energy Ministerial, CEM, which is the international clean energy leadership platform to accelerate clean energy transition. I am Mr. Han Kuman, Senior Energy Economist of Area, and I am your MC for today's conference. Briefly, today's conference is the fourth Asia CCUS Knowledge Sharing Conference in which knowledge sharing is one of among the major activity of Asia CCUS network to support the Asia CCUS development and deployment in Asia. Uh, let me link our conference to what is going on at the COP26 as it will be a key driver for CCUS adoption and deployment around the world. At COP26, the world leader has successfully announced the consensus on face down and abate coal, and country has set ambitious target to reduce emission to limit the temperature rise to well below two degrees Celsius, preferably to 1.5 degrees Celsius of temperature rise above the pre industrial level. All those the countries seem to have some contradiction on the timeline of net zero emission and other climate policies, but in general, they have set a building block to achieve climate goal. We observe that there are some strong pressure from various international community and country alliance to ask country to facing out coal use, ending fossil fuel subsidy, putting price on carbon, protecting vulnerable community and delivering 100 billion climate finance commitment to support developing country. If all this can be translated into real, real policy action, it will have enormous impact on the speed of adoption of CCUS around the world as a technology of choice that can think emission. But the more important is about the experience of success and failure on the CCUS implementation that we will learn from Europe. And you will hear in the next few minutes from our expert from the EU Commission. Uh, without further delay, uh, we are very honored to invite Mr. Taiso Hara, Director General of Research and Policy Design Administration of IRIA, to make opening remarks. Hara-san, the floor is yours, please. Dr. Fumi, thank you for your introduction. Very good morning, afternoon, members, supporting members of the Asia CCS Network, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I am Taizo Hara, the Director General of Research and Policy Design of Area. Today, I am pleased to have this opportunity to provide my opening remarks at the fourth Asia CCS Network Knowledge Sharing Conference. As I said of this conference, I am pleased to draw your attention about COP26 at Glasgow briefly, which could be an influence driver to make the CCS development and development. At the COP26, as many countries have pledged their commitment towards carbon neutrality by this mid-century, this commitment comes as a clear target of cutting the use of fossil fuel, especially coal use around the world. This seems to bring large consensus to move away from fossil fuels through energy transition strategy. It is very likely that the outcome of COP26 will influence policies in countries around the world for transitioning towards a low carbon society and to meet the Paris Agreement. We will observe closely on the policy development with related to the CCUS development and deployment after the COP26. It is no doubt that the race to net zero emission is starting and it is very challenging for many countries that, high, that have high dependency on fossil fuels, especially for many developing countries around the world, including many countries in Asia. However, we know that countries that can make lowering and decarbonizing one's own economy, not only helps protect the environment, but also enhance opportunities for future economic growth as many policies will offer incentive to do so. The decarbonization will require policy changes towards renewable energy, the deployment of clean energy such as hydrogen, along with carbon offset mechanisms such as energy efficiency and carbon credit, 
and the deployment of carbon sink technology such as CCUS. Today, conference is the fourth CCUS knowledge sharing conference that Asia CCS Network organized with partners around the world to bring the up-to-date knowledge and experience on CCS deployment and de development. So far, we have organized three online knowledge sharing conferences, which focus on the investment opportunities on CCUS in Asia, technologies development of CCUS, and the CO2 storage hub and CO2 storage potential in Asia. In partnership with Clean Energy Ministry, CEM Secretariat, today, conference will share experience from European community for both success and failure with related to CCUS. We believe that we need to learn both success and failure to understand the bottlenecks of the development and deployment of CCUS that Asia could learn from the European past and present experience. I also wish to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Jipo Riponen, coordinator of CM CCS initiative for working closely with the Asia CC Network Secretariat to make this event happen timely. Also, I wish to thank the experts, Mr. Chris Boresta, CCS policy lead at EU Commission. Also, Mr. Paolo Granstrom, EU director, Zero Emission Platform, and Dr. Sale Abraham, board member of committee at Oil and Gas Downstream Regulatory Agency Indonesia for sharing your knowledge and experience on for today's conference. Once again, thank you very much for, and I hope you will find the conference very useful. I hope you wish the conference to reach a fruitful outcome. Thank you, and I stop here. Back to you, Mr. Dr. Puminsa. Thank, thank you so much, Harasan, for uh, your insightful opening remarks. Uh, next, we are very honored to have Mr. Juho Lipponen, the coordinator CEM CCUS initiative uh, to make the opening remark. Joho San, the floor is yours, please. Many thanks, Pumin, uh, for the introduction. And uh, uh, Hara San, thank you also for your introduction and for your, your kind words. So I'm Juho Lipponen, coordinator of the Clean Energy Ministerial CCUS initiative. And um, I'm very, very happy to, to, uh, for, for SEM CCUS initiative to co-host the event today. Um, <clears throat> The Clean Energy Ministerial is a voluntary process to accelerate uh, clean energy um, across different technologies. Um, COP26 and the UNFCCC process was already mentioned, and it's a really important backdrop. And if you like, the difference between that and the SEM is that um, the SEM does not really set objectives or targets like the UNFCCC does. However, we can be a tool to achieve many of the clean energy outcomes that are uh, that are needed. And that's, I think, where we come in and where we can really play an interesting and very central role um, to drive clean energy deployment. The SEM has 29 member countries, works on all possible technologies. And the CCUS initiative under the SEM, we are a group of 13 uh, uh, governments, countries with the objective to accelerate CCUS. And we are also global with members from North America, from Europe, Africa and Middle East and Asia Pacific. And so covering a lot of different countries and different grounds, but with the uh, uh, common denominator that all the countries who are members are keen to drive carbon capture deployment forward in their countries. Um, indeed, COP26 is an absolutely vital backdrop for, um, for CCUS. Uh, over the past two weeks, um, uh, these, these discussions unfolded, uh, produced certain results, and I'm definitely thinking that the glass is half full and not half empty. Uh, the steps were, were taken into the right direction, and, and our direction of travel towards 1.5 degrees is, is, is crisper than it ever was. And that's a really important thing also for carbon capture, uh, because the this, this more stringent and the more um, ambitious these objectives are, the more we are going to need carbon capture solutions across different industries, also including negative emissions. Now, programs are being developed by a lot of countries, not only the ones under the SEM CCUS initiative, but elsewhere as well. And I think it's really important to learn, learn from those experiences. And, and one of the ways that the SEM CCUS initiative operates is to share that experience. Um, today we will have a focus on the European Union, and I think there's certainly 
very interesting developments and very interesting lessons to be drawn from, from the rather long history in CCUS that the EU has, has had. And there's been ups and there's been downs, uh, like everywhere. Um, and really getting learnings from the downs, but also building on the success stories is a, is a really important thing to do. And I think that's, we have a nice occasion today to, uh, uh, to share some of these experiences. Um, we will hear from two groups, two individuals on the EU side today. Um, Chris Polesta is from the European Commission. And for those in, uh, in the Asian network who don't intimately know the European institutions, the European Commission is obviously a very central institution in Europe because it's, it proposes legislation and, and drives policy forward. No more on that. I think Chris will explain what they what they do, but um, it is not the only institution, but it's a very central one, and 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 uh, and they can really develop policies across uh, various aspects of energy uh, as well, and bring legislation then for decision with other EU institutions. Um, so that'll be a really interesting discussion from. Chris's side. Uh, secondly, we will hear from Per Olof, who is from the Zero Emissions Platform, or ZEP. And uh, ZEP is an industry advisory group that essentially advises the European institutions on CCUS policy. And that's another really interesting angle that we're going to be hearing, uh, hearing from uh, today. Uh, ZEP is um, also a rather long-standing group. I think they were founded in 2005, so they've been in existence for over 15 years, um, and they've seen these ups and downs in Europe, and, and that'll be a really interesting uh, uh, thing to hear, hear Perulov's uh, and Zepp's thoughts on what's been going on. Um, <clears throat> so accelerating carbon capture is really important and vital now. We cannot think about this as being something that is interesting in 2050. It needs to be important for governments and administrations as of today. And that's why I think it's important and interesting to share learnings. Um, yesterday was an important day in European uh, CCUS policy, worth over a billion euro. But that's all I'm going to say, because I know that Chris and Perlov would probably comment on what went on yesterday. Uh, but there were some great advances in in uh, European CCUS policy. And with that, thank you for joining and uh, back to you, Pumit. Thank, thank, thank you so much, uh, Joho San, uh, for your insightful op opening remark. Uh, now we move to the next uh, session. Uh, we will have a deep dive into the lesson learned from the EU experience on both success and failure of the CCUS, uh, as uh, uh, Juho San as well as Harasan already highlighted. We have a key speaker today, the, uh, Chris Bolista. Uh, he is the CCUS policy lead at the EU Commission. He's going to talk about uh, learning from failure, uh, building on success, EU experience on CCUS. And after that, we'll proceed uh, with Pierre Olof Granstrom, the EU director on the zero emission platform. He's going to talk on the uh, view on the EU experience. After that, uh, that presentation, Dr. Saleh Abdurrahman, the board member of committee at oil and gas downstream regulatory agency of Indonesia, will uh, have some comment and appreciation on the presentation as well as we are going to have some dialogue on these, the, the key speaker on, on that uh, uh, topic. And then we will have open discussion where participant can drop a question uh, to the chat box and I try to direct that to the speaker as much as possible. Uh, to start with uh, our key speaker, uh, distinguished speaker, uh, I'm very honored to invite first uh, Mr. Chris Bolista uh, for his presentation. Chris, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much uh, for your kind words and uh, thank you for, for having me here. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to, to share my, uh, my insights on, on uh, what, what happened to, uh, to the CCS and, uh, and uh, how we approached uh, the technology. As, as you already said, um, uh, we started developing CCS in Europe quite, 
quite some time ago. It's, it, the file has long history. Uh, the first target uh, for CCS in, in the European Commission uh, was set in, in 2007. And back then we thought, okay, let's have a commercially viable CCS by, by 2020 as a technology uh, uh, and let's go to, to a large demonstration phase. Um, and, and how we were going to do that, we uh, prepared a complex package of, of measures to, to deploy CCS in, in Europe. We, we tabled legislation, we prepared uh, targeted funding mechanisms, we also prepared knowledge sharing mechanisms uh, similar to, to what you are doing uh, today with, uh, with these workshops. Uh, we also um, prepared ground for some infrastructure investment, and we also, uh, of course, uh, targeted some, some research because, uh, because to move from pilot from research phase to, to demo and industrial scale still requires a lot of, a lot of lease research. And let me run you quickly through all the steps we did, and then I'll try to assess them. Uh, First, of course, we, we, we needed to do a, a enabling a framework, legislative framework for CCS, because no one uh, did before uh, transport and storage of, of, of CO2. Actually, before we started uh, working on the file, uh, CO2 uh, storage under the seabed in Europe was, uh, was forbidden. Uh, so the CCS directive that we, that we adopted uh, uh, in 2009, um, uh, provided a comprehensive enabling framework for, for storage and transport of, of CO2. Uh, we provided detailed guidance on how to safely uh, transport CO2 uh, through pipelines and store it permanently uh, underground, be it uh, under the seabed or onshore. Uh, of course, there are detailed uh, instructions on, on, on how to permit storage sites. And we in the European Commission have a review uh, right. So every country uh, of the European Union that wants, to, that wants to issue a storage CO2 storage permit needs to send the, the draft permits to the European Commission. And we assess them under so many angles that uh, that is really uh, safe and it will uh, stay permanently underground. Of course, there is an important part in the directive on the financial liability. So what happens when unfortunately CO2 leaks from the storage site? And that part is hooked up to our carbon trading system. So as, a, as an installation, uh, industrial installation in Europe, you, you need to have allowances for your, uh, for your emissions. And of course, when, you, when your uh, CO2 leaks from a storage site, you have to cover the, 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 the amount that, uh, that the CO2 leaked uh, uh, denominated in the, in the emissions. Um, funding mechanisms, we, we of course, we, we, we understood that uh, the technology was at the stage where no one would invest in, in any, any project. So we prepared two mechanisms. You, you probably remember that around 2007 and, and eight, we, we had a, a financial crisis. So back then in Europe, we had the, the, the first recovery package. It was quite big and we managed to secure almost 1 billion euro for, for CCS demonstration projects. So we selected carefully six different demonstration projects uh, and each was awarded uh, with 180 million euro. It was a quite a peculiar exercise because we are very specific on what the demonstration project should look like. So we demanded every one of them to have a minimum uh, installed capacity of 250 megawatts. Uh, we, we wanted to have different technologies. So we, we carefully selected a post-combustion project and oxy-fuel combustion and IGCC as well. Uh, they were located in six, six different countries to, to, to actually make sure we have a, also geographical diversity. Uh, and of course, uh, which was a, a very hard requirement, every project needed to feature a full value chain of CCS. So a capture installation, transport and permanent storage. 
The second funding mechanism was attached to the, to the EU carbon trading system. So in the carbon trading, we set aside a, a certain amount of allowances, 300 million of them, and we, we sold them to, uh, to fuel a, a special fund to, to help uh, innovative decarbonizing technologies. And among them was CCS. Um, European Investment Bank was, was helping us uh, to, to allocate the, the amounts of money. And uh, basically, we were counting on three to four million, uh, um, uh, billion, sorry, I should rather say, uh, three to four billion of, of euro uh, from, from the auctioning uh, of the allowances. And this would go, as I said, for CCS, but also some, some other decarbonization technologies. Also here, we counted on integrated CCS value chains and, and we basically hoped to, to top up uh, whatever we, we, we spent uh, in, with the first mechanism I just, I just described. We understood that in order to promote quickly the, the, uh, the technology development and to learn uh, fast from demonstration exercise, we needed a robust knowledge sharing. So we established a, a CCS project network that functions to this day. Um, every project that got funding from the European Commission was required to join the, 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 the share knowledge and share knowledge in the, in the network. Um, we, we thought that you know, helping projects to, uh, to, to learn from one another, to, uh, especially on public awareness, on, on little technological things uh, would, be, would be a good thing and, and it would speed up the, the, the collective learning. And of course, we wanted to, uh, to build a team mentality. So uh, to, to get, generate a, a group that would, uh, would, would feel that they are moving together towards a new, uh, new industry. Um, of course, there was no CO2 infrastructure at that point. So um, we recognized that and uh, we designed a, a, a mechanism that, uh, that started coordinating the CO2 infrastructure deployment in Europe. We have a mechanism uh, that um, supports uh, European planning of energy infrastructure, uh, electricity grid and, and natural gas grid. And we added CO2 pipelines to that mechanisms. Uh, so um, you could also, uh, if, if, your, uh, if you are uh, taking, uh, making use of that mechanism, you could also get some European funding for your, for your infrastructure. Uh, we also prepared a, a study on, uh, on uh, that, that mapped uh, sources of CO2 emissions and potential storage sites that uh, helped inform us uh, what kind of infrastructure at European scale is needed and uh, where are the priority links. Um, of course, research and innovation is always there. It was always there, as I said, to move from pilot phase to, to demonstration is, is, is a, tricky, a tricky thing. And we were aware of the uh, uh, value of death where uh, projects uh, uh, would would move from from research phase to to commercial phase. Many of them would would die because of lack of uh, of support and uh, and lacking uh, elements of of research and innovation. And there were two specific mechanisms on on research and innovation. Uh, Horizon twenty twenty. It's uh, it's our European uh, funding mechanism for research and the strategic energy technology plan. This is a a a strategy of which technologies are important for us in the domain, in the energy domain, and CCS was defined as, as one of them. Um, what did we do wrong? Well, this graph, I think it's, it's key to show you what happened when we initially designed the policies. When we were thinking of, of deploying CCS projects, we thought, okay, we have a, 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 a CO2 price uh, in Europe that is hovering around 20 euro, well, 15, 20 euro, but, so that's fine. Uh, we will uh, put some money uh, and help projects to, 
to, to, to cover the capital costs, but the operating costs will be taken care of by a high carbon price because we were hoping that, that it will only go up. But uh, once we uh, deployed the funding mechanisms, <laughs> the, the, the carbon price in Europe collapsed. And uh, as you see this, um, this uh, red arrow on, on, on my slide, this is when, when we were deploying our mechanisms. So the, the carbon price collapsed and uh, as, as was even as low as five euro. And the projects basically withdrew and, and folded because many operators said, listen, uh, all your mechanisms are fine, but they are still not enough. And also we have different means to decarbonize mm, power sector because we, our focus initially in Europe was on the power sector. And from the first down of CCS, we got the first down of CCS. And it turned out that the funding was not sufficient and there was no business case on the horizon at all in the power sector. We thought that the carbonizing call with CCS would make sense and would not only help us to decarbonize power sector in Europe, but also would help us to create technology that we could, uh, we could share with, uh, with, uh, with other countries. But uh, it turned out that different technologies uh, decarbonized our power sector. It was gas and, uh, and renewables, and there was no business case for coal. Um, we insisted, as I, as I told you, on, on a, uh, a 20, 250 uh, minimum capacity, and that proved too big. And as well, we, we thought, okay, uh, uh, integrated CCUs chain has to be demonstrated, but that also was over-optimistic and, uh, and many projects felt, okay, that's too complicated. Are we not gonna do that? Uh, public awareness issues in many, many countries, especially those who wanted to store CO2 onshore, mounted on, on, the, on, on the problems of projects and they, they basically used that also as an excuse not to go ahead. Um, uh, well, when all the projects or most of the projects folded, uh, we actually uh, ended up with an empty uh, knowledge sharing mechanisms. Uh, at the, at, towards the end of the whole exercise, we, we had one project that left. So how to share knowledge if you have just, <laughs> just one member. Um, and of course, there were no infrastructure needs because if the projects folded, then there was, there was no need for, for empty CO2 pipelines. Um, and last but not least, we don't really know how the infrastructure, how the legislation would, would, would fare because, because no one really applied for a storage permit. So this is still uh, unproven. This is uh, just to say that, okay, we, 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 we have failed in the first step, in the first wave of CCS projects, but we certainly learned a great amount. Uh, we know today that we will still need CCS and also CCU, but not in the power sector where we initially fought and not on coal. Uh, we, of course, realize that uh, funding is an issue, but it's, it's a, such an issue that we should probably go for smaller projects and not insist on a full uh, uh, value chain. Uh, clusters are uh, the uh, point to start with, and uh, it makes a very uh, much more sense than integrated uh, infrastructure projects. Public awareness uh, is less of an issue in Europe, where you're not uh, betting on extending life of coal. So now we, we think, okay, this is uh, uh, CCS would help the industry, hard to abate sectors. It will provide negative emissions if combined with uh, biogenic sources of CO2. Um, and uh, we don't know, as I said, what, uh, what lessons we could learn on, on legislation because we never, we never used it. Now we are, uh, we are in the second down, not down, of CCS and CCU. Uh, and this again is mainly 
due to the carbon price and our climate targets. This will destroy the first wave of projects. It will help to deliver at the second wave. We have a strong carbon price of currently around 60 euro per ton and a, a hard climate neutrality target by 2050. Uh, as Juho said, a new funding mechanism is totally different to, to what we designed before. So we go for smaller projects, more diversified, uh, not integrated. And yesterday uh, we announced funding for four projects and uh, uh, you would see a contrast between what we were trying to, to promote, so big coal power generation projects. Yesterday, uh, one project we awarded money is uh, a cement factory, one is a hydrogen uh, manufacturing, uh, one is a biofuel refinery. So you see a, a very, very diverse mix of technologies and, 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 and how exciting the field is now in the industry. Um, project network is more open. It's not only limited to the project, the big projects that we award money with. It's, it's open to everyone who wants to share knowledge. Um, we also went for some legislative tweaks. So now CCU is, is allowed um, as, as a mixture of technologies. Uh, uh, mineralization of CO2 is regarded as storage as well. Um, uh, and in terms of infrastructure, we were considering uh, helping also storage projects, not only uh, CO2 pipelines, maybe even, even CO2 shipping. This, this is now under, uh, under review, revision, so you will soon see. And uh, we are uh, soon publishing a document that will provide uh, certificates for carbon removals. So that's another yet another field where we are moving into because this is uh, where we will need CCS to deliver negative emissions. And of course, there'll be maybe more, uh, more tools, and more things to come on, on CCS and CCU. Thank you very much. If there are questions, I'm, I'm happy to take them. For Lizette and how we work and what, is, uh, what has been done, because I think that uh, uh, ZEP has an and is a very, very important player in order to help the Commission, uh, the industry, uh, the research community, and all the projects in order to, to drive this forward. So first of all, uh, the Zero Emissions Platform is an advisor to the European Commission on CCS and CCU. Uh, we are a, a, a technical uh, platform under the, uh, the SEP plan. We have a very broad member base, and I think I, I will come back to a couple of the, uh, the really important uh, conclusions uh, as I go along, and this is one of them. Uh, we have a very, very broad member base, everything from oil and gas, uh, industry, utilities, equipment suppliers, uh, research uh, fellows, but also unions and environmental NGOs. And this is, uh, makes the development of the work very, very good. We are the, uh, or at least we see us as the go-to organization to liaise with the European institutions. And we have also a very close cooperation with the EU governments. And this is also a key, one of the, uh, the keys that, that uh, uh, was missing in, in Chris's uh, description before. On the right-hand side, you can see the, the members of, of the Zero Emissions Platform uh, from, from all over Europe. And we can also see that many of them, of course, are international companies. So just to highlight that what we are trying to achieve here, first of all, to determine and create the conditions that are needed in order to reach net zero by 2050 in Europe, and also to demonstrate uh, that actions need to be taken now in order to achieve the goal. The most important thing, and I will come back to this time after time, is to really accelerate the deployment of large scale CO2 transport in Europe. This is the basis for everything, making it possible for everyone 
to reach safe storage. And of course, this lays the basis for clean and competitive energy and industrial sectors. Uh, very, very important, of course, for large scale clean hydrogen and also renewables. And I will come back to these things a, a little bit later in the discussion. I think this could, uh, even if it's detailed, I think it's very important just to try to show what, what, what we are doing. So, as Chris said, uh, this was set up in 2005, and of course, uh, in, in the beginning, this was very much focused on coal. Uh, it's changed dramatically, and I'll come back to that as well. So today, the focus is very, very much industry, and many uh, of the utilities, almost everyone, disappeared from the work of Zen. Uh, in you know, let's say four or five, six years ago, and now, um, now the, the focus has been on the industrial companies, but utilities are slowly coming back, uh, uh, coming back to, uh, coming back to the, um, uh, coming back into the membership. Um, I also would like to say that the membership is rising quite strongly, strong momentum on CCS and CCU. So. Uh, we have open board meetings, advisory council meetings, uh, as we call them, where we have both the members, but also uh, uh, observers are involved or invited. So I would be very pleased to invite uh, some of you to, to join our meetings that we have four times a year. The government group is extremely important. Two, three years ago, we had three, four governments with a focus on UK, the Netherlands and Norway that took part. This year, we've already had 20 governments from Europe involved in the work, showing an extreme interest in, in driving this forward. Of course, we have a technology development, uh, uh, we call the network with uh, a lot of working groups, and I'll come back to that. We have policy and economics driving the funding and the policies trying to help the Commission as much as possible. Uh, we have also an external relations groups in order to try to help to coordinate how, how the CCUS community is communicating and talking to the institutions. And I would also like to highlight that we are starting up a network for projects. We can see that with an extreme amount of projects coming on board now, uh, there is a strong need to help out, to support the project, but also to create a climate of, of cooperating between and sharing knowledge between the things. On the right-hand side, just to highlight what we have been doing lately. So carbon dioxide removal, really, really crucial. We have two reports out, and I, I would recommend you to have a look at our, our webpage here. Uh, I will say a couple of words about that later. We have the Low carbon hydrogen, extremely important to develop in order to, to really lift uh, the clean hydrogen economy in Europe. Uh, we have methodologies to calculate positive effects for the technologies, the transport side, uh, and also storage safety. Very crucial, uh, uh, Chris also highlighted this. Oh, right now we are working on, and this is very important, CO2 transport by ship. Uh, this will be the focal point going forward. Biomass and biodiversity, very important, of course, and how CCS can help because we need a lot of flexible power generation with all the, uh, with all the uh, solar and wind power that is coming into Europe. And of course, uh, we are looking into what Chris also talked about, uh, the directive of geo geological uh, storage of CO2 in order to maximize and make it make it possible for everyone. Uh, what should a government do when they start out to look at the possibility to store uh, CO2? Really, really important. I will go just to highlight the basis, of course. So uh, we have heard uh, Chris's uh, description of uh, why it didn't work. We, uh, we saw that the um, the price collapse, as, as, as you said, the, the near 300 funding, uh, it didn't really work out. And there was a 
there was not a good coordination between the EU level and the, and the governments. Uh, uh, I think that is very important to, to highlight. We have a very strong shift also from power to industry. Now, the focus is on cement, lime, steel, and chemicals rather than on uh, on coal that we could see uh, that we could see uh, that we could see before, and also the time management. Just one item to highlight: uh, also the overlap of policies is very important here. So at the same time, as you could see from Chris's slide, we had below 15 euros per ton on in the, the price in the EU ETS. The, uh, some countries or several countries had uh, subsidies for renewables that, that the, where the cost was uh, uh, corresponding to five, six, even 700 euros per ton. So overlapping policies is, of course, also a problem that you have to look at. So uh, where are we now? Well, we have the climate law and the European Green Deal, a very strong driver, strong momentum for CCS and CCE. We have strategies uh, of industry, hydrogen, and uh, energy system integration. I will not go much into them. I would like to highlight something that Chris didn't focus on taxonomy for sustainable activities. And this was, uh, he, this is a, I would like to say a rule book for investments in clean technology. And this has been a very, very good basis for, uh, for the regulation for CCS in Europe that lays out a very clear basis for CCS being uh, uh, an economic activity that can make other, any other activity sustainable. It also defines and describes the CO2 infrastructure and also with a focus on both pipelines, ship, train and truck and so forth. Chris has described uh, several of these. I just would like to highlight again the importance in the EU rules for trans-European networks cross-border, uh, the very important uh, uh, input of both storage and multimodalities, including shipping. London Protocol has, of course, been very important for, for, for us, making it possible to transport CO2 across borders to store offshore. And here, in order to make this possible without having the ratification, of course, of bilateral agreements, we can see many bilateral agreements coming up between countries in Europe. Of course, hydrogen, uh, sorry, uh, Horizon Europe DRNI program, and I would say a couple of words about that going forward as well. So, looking at this, uh, we can see today on the right hand side, the upper. And this is on our website. I can't do it uh, uh, dynamic here, but we have more than 40 European market ready projects, CCS and CCU, all along, along the value chain. And that market ready means that it will be operational before 2030. I would like to highlight here that given how Europe is set up and the focus on the Northwest, where we have almost all possibilities to store, at least to start off with, in the North, North Sea. Uh, the infrastructure here is, is really, really crucial, enabling all emitters to, uh, to, to connect to safe storage. Uh, I've already highlighted the importance of pipeline, uh, not only pipeline, but ship, barge, trucks and trains and so forth. And before we go further, I just want to highlight two projects that are really at the focal point here. And both of them are up here. So you have the Northern Lights in Norway, making it possible to store and many uh, projects all around Northwest Europe is today planning to connect to storage in, in Northern Lights. The starting point is storage with CO2 from Fortum Oslo Verme in uh, 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 
uh, waste incineration with CCS and Nordsem uh, cement with CCS. The other focal point I would say is the Portos project uh, in Holland, where, where you also can see that many projects are linking and connecting. So at the moment, focus is on how to get your CO2 out of your country, away from where we are, and uh, up to the North Sea uh, area. And here, I would like first to highlight that it will be very important with transport by ship, and not only offshore, also 48% uh, of all transport services in, in continental Europe, and I'm not talking about CCS or CCU, are done by ship. So we have a good opportunities here to transport that all along. And we are working on standards on how to make this interoperable. I would also highlight uh, what we heard before uh, a little bit. We heard about the Innovation Fund uh, yesterday, but it's also clear that we have many projects that have been accepted as project of common interest and that then are eligible for funding in the Connecting Europe facility that, that Chris discussed before. And here we can see projects, especially in Northwest, but also Poland, uh, Poland and France uh, are in, involved in this, of course. And again, urgency to deploy, and the Commission is very clear, we need to test this during the 2020s. Going into uh, the CCUS set plan, the RNI uh, work, and I'm just going to say a couple of words. 11 countries, as you can see on the right hand side, are working together, led by uh, the Netherlands, Norway, and the Zero Emissions Platform. And we are working on all parts of the CCUS value chain. Uh, and uh, we have made some, some modeling scenarios uh, uh, actually putting together all the global and European scenarios. And we, together with the UCL Energy Institute in London, and it's clear that we have quite strong values looking going forward. So one gigaton is what they can see as a medium uh, for 2050, for example. We have set targets uh, for this work in order to drive the development forward. Uh, and we have also brought forward and published a roadmap. This is what needs to be done during the 2020s in order to make, uh, make this possible and to be online in order to reach uh, 2050 uh, zero. Just to highlight it very quickly, these are the targets. And I would really uh, recommend you to have a look at, at the website that you can see that so 25, commercial scale CCS projects. We need a plan, an infrastructure plan in all countries on how to, to, to get the CO2 infrastructure on board. We really need a storage atlas and, uh, and storage operations uh, also on, on shore. We have a very tough work on the, on the capture, CCU development, and also you have that all countries must have CCS and CCU in the strategies uh, going forward. As I said, we are preparing, uh, we, are, we are published a roadmap and this roadmap is clear. It shows the role of CCS and CCU. It shows the status and progress today, the technical development needs, but also everything actually, what we need from policy frameworks, business models, uh, and research and uh, development and innovation, of course, and uh, in order to make to make this happen. And I'm I recommend to read, you to read it. But here I would like to just to highlight a couple of things here that way we can see that we are catching up also on the conclusions that we saw before. We would like the EU to prepare a strategy for CCS and CCU. We believe that that is crucial. To, to lay the basis for the investments needed. We can see capacity building on CCS and CCU needed. 
on all levels in, in Europe. As I said before, we need the, the national energy and climate plans and the industrial pathways to really include CCS and CCU. Clear definitions and also in, in incentives for CDR or for carbon dioxide removals is crucial. Priority for storage, of course, this is what didn't work really well last time to synchronize EU and national level funding schemes, uh, uh, crucial. And I would like to highlight as well, please get the NGOs on board. That makes it so much easier to drive this uh, development forward. So, looking at the, uh, what needs to be done going forward. And on the right-hand side, I just wanted to highlight how, how much is going on right now, this year. And, uh, and uh, Chris talked about the Fit for 55, 13 uh, policy instruments that, that needs to, to be updated in order to drive this forward. And we are positive so far with what we have seen from the Commission. Looking at the rest of the, of the, of the year here, and the 10 e regulation, cross-border infrastructure need to include both storage and shipping trains and truck and transport, as Chris also highlighted before. We have a hydrogen and gas market decarbonization package and also looking at an update of the taxonomy and very crucial decisions on should nuclear and gas be included as sustainable and how in that case. And this is for the gas part is crucial for the CCS development going forward. And I would also like to say that we don't have incentives yet for negative emissions. So we are really looking forward to and helping and working together with the commission to, to, to drive this communication, the certification of renewables. Enable, uh, enabling policy framework, of course, coherent uh, funding, really, really crucial, strong uh, uh, continued support for Horizon Europe uh, and the r and uh, uh, developments and activities. Political recognition, we still have a, a way to go here. And finally, just to highlight the extreme importance for Europe to have um, a strategy for CCS and CCU. I'll be very happy to take uh, any, any questions uh, going forward. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Pia Olaf Grandstrom, for your excellent uh, presentation, also your uh, insightful uh, uh, detail on this European experience. I think this is very rich. Uh, a, a presentation. I think the we probably Asian learn a lot from this uh, European experience. Uh, to proceed, uh, uh, I would like also to invite uh, uh, Dr. Saleh Abdurrahman uh, for uh, your kind comment and also uh, have a dialogue with uh, Chris and uh, Pierre Olive for their presentation. Uh, Dr. Saleh, the floor is yours, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fulmin, for having me here. Uh, thank you, uh, speakers, distinguished speakers, Chris and Olo. I really appreciate your presentation. We we learn uh, the the EU situation. You have the the first uh, and the second down of CCS uh, in in Europe. I think uh, I believe that when when uh, CCS and CCUS uh, uh, can be developed in, in EU, it will have a, a very positive impact to the implementation of uh, CCS and CCS worldwide. So we really uh, uh, depend actually on the progress of EU uh, implementation of CC, CCS. Because as you know that uh, in most ASEAN uh, countries, uh, companies uh, working here, are coming from from EU and, and, and North America. So I think we really expect that. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, I agree with uh, all of that uh, uh, CCS is essential 
to reach the, the net zero uh, target by 2050 in Europe and maybe 2060 in most uh, ASEAN countries. Uh, what uh, we can learn from the presentation from two distinguished speakers, uh, I guess in three uh, uh, aspects in my opinion. One is on the, on the financial issues. Yeah, I think uh, I was discouraged with the fact that uh, some uh, a commitment for budget CCS was not uh, 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 implemented. And I think uh, with the new uh, COP26 pledge from uh, developed countries, I believe that uh, we can again propose uh, uh, some budget for the implementation of CCS and CCUS. I also uh, see that uh, the carbon market, the carbon trading, carbon pricing is key to the implementation of the uh, CCS and CCUS. And I'm uh, proposing if we can have, if we can uh, make some, some uh, studies on how to, to develop a specific a certain market, market for a CCS uh, and CCUS implementation. Uh, given the fact that the cost of uh, the high cost of uh, CCS and CCUS implementation, I think as as you as uh, as, as Chris uh, uh, told us that uh, now is the the pace out of coal is 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 on on the horizon and most EU countries uh, are moving to the renewable, and I think if all EU countries can get like hundred percent renewable, then I think. Uh, that will be uh, another issues for the uh, CCS. Secondly, I think uh, on the issues of the technology, uh, I think, uh, thank you that we, we, we consider also to use the, like uh, all of said, that uh, as the source of uh, CO2 in, in, in our case coming from uh, different sites. So we, and we have some big, big reservoir uh, in far away from the, the, the current uh, CO2, uh, CO2 source, then I think uh, we need uh, to uh, investigate uh, to uh, study on the use of ship for transporting the, 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 the CO2. I think uh, uh, the technology, we really hope that uh, the progress is made uh, uh, in, in, in EU and maybe in Japan, uh, to reduce the cost, especially on the on the capture and on the transport uh, uh, aspects of, of of the CCS and CCUS. Third, I think on the legislation, I think uh, we now preparing the the legislation, uh, especially on CCUS, uh, since we see that uh, there is some uh, some incentive. Uh, that can increase the production of gas uh, or oil using the CCUS. So we see that is uh, more uh, uh, prospective. And we, we had a study uh, with uh, ADB, for instance, that indicate, indicated that if we just use a CCS here without support from uh, carbon trading, then uh, it will really difficult to be implemented. So that we uh, see no more on the, on the CCUS uh, implementation. Another factors that we, we look at uh, now is also uh, the, the, the combination of, of sourcing. Uh, under the, the, the current legislation, we focus especially on the oil and gas. Uh, but since we see that uh, we have the target of net zero by 2060, and uh, our natural things cannot afford to, uh, to, uh, to absorb all the remaining uh, emission from uh, fossils, then we have to look, the only option in my opinion is on the CCS. So that I think uh, we need to have some uh, insight from uh, both of you and how to uh, manage this different source of CO2, uh, since uh, maybe the natures and also the, the situation, the cost associated with CO2 uh, emission from different source may be different and how to treat that. I think this uh, some issues that we may need to have more uh, uh, information from all of and Chris. But uh, uh, finally, I think uh, most important is now how to mobilize the, the funding. Uh, I think uh, the funding is very important for us if we want to uh, let the CCS or CCUS 
is becoming an essential part to to help us to to, to get the ambition of uh, net zero by 2050. Those some issues that uh, we need uh, to have some more uh, insight from our distinguished speakers. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Wamin. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Saleh, for a uh, very practical comment and a uh, very nice comment to our uh, uh, distinguished uh, speaker today, uh, Chris, and also Pierre Olive. Now we have already received uh, several questions. It's coming in, and uh, I think some of the questions already been uh, answered in the text. But anyway, I just would like to read out some of the questions. Uh, that some question directly uh, uh, direct to the speaker and some I think uh, uh, speakers, including Dr. Saleh and Joe Hosan, if you may please come in and intervene. I think the first question that uh, although it's already been answered, but it will be key for, for Asia because when the introduction of the European experience on this CCUS, how do you observe this electricity price. If any change in terms of the price, it, that will be a key point for Asia in terms of affordability. And uh, since CCUS has been, uh, to some extent, has been advanced in Europe, will this CCUS also affect the electricity price in Europe? That, that one question. And the next, uh, that, that particular for Chris or for Joe Hosan or for Pierre Odif, and another question is directly to P.O. Leaf from the Dear Gosan. What would be your advice for Asia Pacific region to incentivize CCUS to reach the number of projects that already, like you see today, exist in Europe? And particular, what attract the private, how to attract the private, the capital to the CCUS? I, I take these two questions first. Uh, may I invite Chris first to address? So which one you want me to, to address? The... Uh, this particularly on uh, your experience on any, since some of the introduction of CCUS in Europe, if this will affect on electricity, electricity price in Europe, in your experience? Well, I, I think that it's, it's fair to say that uh, first projects of, of CCS in Europe will not be in, on, on, on power generation, but on industry. Uh, but some will obviously come to the, the gas power generation and maybe sustainable biomass to then create negative emissions. And I think uh, we, we have to think in, in sort of when this happens and and my take on this is that when ccs comes to the power generation then it will not affect the power price because uh it will come to the system to stabilize the renewables so it will provide system uh system services uh and and i think that it it would actually stabilize prices, not uh, not make them uh, volatile. So I think that in to, if you would uh, if if you uh, add CCS on a, on a power plant today to the system, it would be expensive. So my point is, when this will happen, it will not be expensive anymore. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Chris. I think this is the key question. And, and your response to Asia stakeholder because they are concerned on this point. As you said, one, the, if Asia can able to establish the carbon trading, then mm. the incentive for the CCUS, I think will, will not be the issue if the whole system works. I think, thank you so much for your uh, response on this uh, issue. And the next question, I would like to invite P.O. Leaf Grandstrom to address on the question that directly addressed to you. Uh, what, uh, what would be your advice for the Asia Pacific region to incentivize CCUS to reach the number of projects that already exist today in Europe? Uh, do you have any uh, uh, advice for Asia? Please appear. 
Uh, thank you for a, for a, a wonderful question, uh, a, a, a big a big question. First off, we'd just like to to uh, complete uh, uh, a little bit with to what Chris said, just to highlight that when you introduce, uh, like we have the emission trading scheme, a, a carbon price. When you do that, then the price on, on the carbon will have a direct uh, uh, will have a direct effect on many people's electricity bills. So that in itself, so so almost all countries in Europe are transferring the price of carbon directly into the into the uh, consumers, even if like a country like Sweden, where you don't have any or most uh, fossil fuel sources. So just to have that said as well. So the, the, the really big question, just to give you, I can only give you uh, uh, some small pieces. And, and first of all, a carbon price, of course, is important, but it will take a lot of time uh, to introduce. So, so that is a long-term uh, 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 solution, but it is important to have. And of course, if we could all have uh, coherent carbon prices across the globe, that would be the best solution, of course. But uh, I would like to highlight a couple of other things. Uh, it's all about public and private cooperation. So that is number one. Number two is that you also need the cooperation on regional levels, country levels, between countries. And, and that is also crucial. And these two didn't really match up when we saw the development uh, in, in Europe uh, earlier. I would also highlight that even if you have a carbon price, what we see in Europe, you still need uh, uh, these uh, uh, contracts for differences. Uh, so we can see that also in the innovation fund that that the Commission is developing, there is this uh, uh, this uh, uh, setup. I would also highlight CO2 infrastructure will be crucial because if you don't have that, it's very, very difficult to make a, a, an investment uh, decision. And we can see that it will be much less of point to point and much more of infrastructure and cluster. And finally, I would also recommend to have contacts with successful projects in Europe and of course in the rest of the world that will make it so much easier to go forward. Just asking the, the, the project, what do you need? is a very important question to ask. I hope that helps a little bit, thank you. Thank you so much, Pierre, for your excellent intervention in, in this uh, uh, key question. And uh, we really enjoy your response. Um, I think we have also one uh, more question. Uh, it's welcome for all panelists and including Joe Hosan, Dr. Saleh to respond. Do you think that the CO2 enhanced oil recovery will contribute to achieve the greenhouse gas emission target in EU? How do you think about that? Maybe uh, from Chris? from thanks thanks i was just uh, starting to type the answer in the in the chat box uh, yes this is uh, uh, i i have heard of of one or two pilot projects around europe that would test um enhanced oil recovery but only to check this the storage site and then in the second phase they would they would just abandon enhanced oil recovery because this is this is in europe it's not commercially viable to do enhanced oil recovery. And also today, uh, the public acceptance for, uh, for storing CO2 to, to get more oil uh, would be a tricky thing. And in my opinion, as a, as, a, as a guy who works on CCS, it could kill the whole CCS file because the, the, the green NGOs would say, hey, this is not the, the climate mitigation technology. This is uh, this is to to get more fossil fuels. So, so the, the enhanced oil recovery discussion in Europe is very very delicate, if you if you will. Okay, th thank you, Chris, for for this intervention. 
perhaps we want also to hear from Dr. Saleh how the Indonesian experience if the policies on enhanced uh, oil recovery will be applied in, in Asia, particularly for Indonesia. Could you share your insight about this, Dr. Saleh, please? Yeah, I think uh, first, I just want to comment on, I think we actually, we hope the, the leadership of uh, EU perhaps because of the experience uh, they have for the CCUS and for all the 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 is uh, constrained to develop the CCS and I think like what all of said that uh, now is the momentum because of the role of CCS is essential to reach the, the net zero for 2050 and I hope that uh, uh, we should do better to let uh, say if we have like the NGOs uh, do not agree with, with the CCS uh, or CCUS implementation, but we, we need to, to discuss with them that we don't have much option. Um, secondly, on our case that we, uh, we see uh, uh, some uh, additional uh, target we can reach with uh, CCS and CCUS. Uh, from three projects the, that we plan to implement on the enhanced gas recovery, we uh, projected to reduce the emission, uh, say by 50 million tons in 20, starting in 2026. So I think we, we see that uh, the, 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 the role of, uh, and this is from three projects and just from oil and gas. So if we later on uh, include uh, the non-oil and gas source of CO2, I think the numbers uh, will increase. But again, uh, it really depends on the carbon uh, market because of the cost uh, of the CCS is, is expensive than developing the, the say the solar uh, technology. Then I think we, we need to have uh, to discuss how then we can develop a market for, uh, for carbon trading for CCS and to, to let this technology uh, can be uh, developed and implemented. Uh, both in ASEAN, in Asia, and also uh, in other parts of, of the world. That's my, my, my response, pa, pa, Pomin. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Saleh, for your excellent uh, intervention on this point. I think because of the time, uh, there are some remaining questions, but I would like to incorporate into a final remark for each of the uh, 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 speakers. And uh, since I think in Europe have a, a, a great experience from uh, legislative framework, policy support, financing infrastructures, and also particularly also very strong roadmap in Europe for, for CCUS. And I also heard from peer uh, presentation also that even Europe have a lot of things going on to support CCUS, that not enough they're going to develop a strategy on CCUS to attract uh, more investment on, on the CCUS. So in this regard, I think Asia is still uh, quite early on, on this. And uh, we want to, from your experience, since you are walking in advance from, from, uh, from Asia, uh, what would be your uh, uh, key recommendation for, for Asia to, uh, to first to start, I mean, uh, I probably would like to invite Joho San first uh, to, to have a few uh, 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 words about how, how would you like to give your remark on, on this point? Thank you, uh, thank you, Pumin. And uh, um, yeah, if you allow a few, few reflections. Um, I mean, first of all, the uh, two talks on, uh, on the EU history and current situation in the future, I think were really extremely candid and revealing uh, and there's several lessons that really can be can be drawn, but I think a key question that could then also translate to a question in the in the Asia Pacific region is simply the first one: that what do you what will you need CCUS for? And I think the EU example of earlier looking at a lot around coal-fired power, uh, and then today moving in a lot more into industry is a very revealing example of of actually the. Uh, um, uh, clarifying what the technology can best do. And clearly the earlier EU approach on focusing on coal and coal-fired power wasn't the one, wasn't compatible with what the power sector wanted at the end. Uh, and 
wasn't compatible with the public acceptance and so forth. Whereas looking at various industrial applications is so much more that. And I think the second point also uh, in terms of implementation um, in the earlier, earlier phase, I think all the projects were kind of envisaged to have point to point and all the infrastructure in one project, whereas currently we are really looking much more at clusters and hubs. Uh, and I think that's the second key learning that can be implemented in all parts of the world that, you know, don't start looking from single project, but start to see where you can actually cluster them together. And, and by doing that, drive down the infrastructure and, and storage uh, costs. And uh, a third point I would mention is this, is this strategy. Um, I think it's interesting that in the, in the EU, there is this discussion and well, I think the fact is that currently perhaps there isn't anything that is that is regrouping everything together into one strategy. And a strategy from a European Union would be helpful to, uh, to then orient uh, the various policies and orient the member states also to, uh, to working uh, more effectively, working together on, uh, on CCUS. And final point I would mention that that was something that Perulov mentioned in his talk is the taxonomy. So how do you ensure that actually the finance markets um, are geared to supporting uh, this and supporting investment in carbon capture and ensuring that any taxonomy that is made that defines what is sustainable activity actually includes CO2 capture and storage uh, in them. And therefore you can, you can also have the finance sector as a key lever to drive investment. Thank you so much, Joho San. I think this uh, excellent recommendation for uh, our stakeholder in Asia. And uh, may I invite Pierre Olive uh, for a few remarks on, on this particular, if you have any addition uh, to, to add. Pierre, please. Uh, thank, thank you very much. No, I think, I think we have been through many, many, uh, many uh, recommendations and also what you highlighted. Uh, maybe to, to take the uh, the why and look into uh, really describing why this is so crucial for the industries uh, in order to uh, to have the economic growth, to preserve jobs, to develop new and so forth, but also to develop this into industrial sector pathways. So how are the sectors going to decarbonize? And this is a very good way, and we are doing this in Europe in order to see how CCS and CCU can be included here. And this also goes for the national plans. And I would like to highlight again the political support linked to firm plans that are both on, on national and regional level and combined with capacity building. So there is a possibility to, to, to drive this. And I, I have to finalize on the, on the same note as Juho did. The taxonomy is a hugely important instrument in order to get a, a clear framework for investments and we need investments. Uh, I would like to, to finalize that. Thank you very much. And I would be very happy to, uh, to uh, uh, have discussions after this if, if anyone would like to discuss this further. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much, Pierre, for excellent remark on this intervention on the uh, recommendation for our stakeholder in Asia. Uh, Chris, do you have any final recommendation for, for this forum? Yes, I'll try to have some, some, some short points. I, I think that just to, just to reinforce my message, um, we, we tried to have a 12 demonstration, big demonstration projects in Europe by, uh, by 2020. And, uh, and we failed, it was a big crash. And now we have a, a, a black box thinking to do. We have to analyze what happened. But uh, in terms of, of this workshop and, and, and the audience, I think that it, there, are, there are important, four important messages, I would say. One, you, I, I think it, stick is as much as important as, as carrot. So before, be, be, uh, if you don't have tar reduction targets, if you don't have carbon price, it is incredibly difficult to deploy uh, expensive technologies like CCS. 
So maybe start from uh, from one sector of the of the economy. Uh, I, of course, you can do enhanced oil recovery because if you don't have a carbon price, you have to incentivize somehow the the the, the companies to do projects. Um, I think the, the 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 lesson we 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 learned the hard way is you have to uh, design uh, supporting mechanisms in a very simple way. They have to be simple, not overcomplicate stuff. Um, a third message I would say: do not over legislate before the sector develops. Uh, even do some sandboxing, what we know from the financing sector. So exemptions may be, you know, for, to, to incentivize demonstration projects, not burden them with rules. And I would say prepare for international cooperation. Uh, COP uh, finally agreed on Article 6. I think uh, for, for people who know what Article 6 is, it's the international cooperation on, uh, on carbon uh, markets. So CCS could play a role there. And, uh, you know, you could be part of that. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chris, for excellent uh, recommendation. I think this is uh, quite important for our stakeholder. And uh, just to move on, uh, Dr. Saleh, do you have any final word and recommendation for this forum as well as the Asia's? We are uh, going to learn a lot from Europe and how we adopt from Europe to our regions. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Bormin. I think I just get from uh, Chris that uh, uh, not to offer legislate the, the CCS and CCS implementation. I think we take note for that also from Juho and, and all of But and in my uh, perspective that uh, uh, collaborative uh, action, uh, we need to enhance between EU and, and ASEAN countries because uh, you have uh, uh, started this uh, uh, projects long time before, and I think we we can learn much on all uh, aspects of the implementation, from the captures, the transport, and so from the storage, and and then we need to uh, make sure that uh, the carbon market is working. This is the agenda for uh, the CCS and CCS implementation. How to make the the CO2, uh, the CCS and CCS is, is, is uh, on, on the market uh, and get some funding from the COP26 pledge. Thank you, Pa Pomin. Thank you so much, Dr. Saleh, for your uh, recommendation and intervention uh, to reflect Asia's, particularly ASEAN uh, uh, point of view, how we adapt and uh, need to adapt more simple first. Uh, thing that how to ensure that how this is going to work in Asia. And uh, let me uh, thank all these uh, speaker, distinguished speaker for today. And we, we really appreciate your in insight and your sharing your experience to Asia stakeholder. To proceed uh, to the final uh, session, uh, it's a closing session. I would like to invite uh, uh, Mr. Sikuru Kimura, the special advisor to the president of area on the energy affair uh, to make some wrap up as well as the closing speech uh, for today's conference. Uh, Kimura Sensei, the floor is yours, please. Uh, thank you very much, Bermin, uh, for your calling me. Uh, and uh, also thank you very much, uh, Sam members, as uh, Mr. Jupos, uh, Mr. Chris, and Mr. Parov, uh, thank you very much for uh, your uh, uh, presentation and uh, sharing the uh, European uh, experience uh, in terms of the uh, CCUS. But anyway, it's, uh, <clears throat> firstly, I'd like to quickly uh, wrap up of the uh, today's uh, presentation. Is uh, uh, Mr. Chris is introduced the CCUS policy in Europe and the legislation and the funding and the knowledge sharing, uh, infrastructure investment and uh, uh, research and innovation is very, very important and uh, key, uh, key uh, parameters uh, in terms of the uh, deployment of uh, CCUS. But uh, uh, Chris also shares the uh, uh, payers uh, first down of the CCUS uh, carbon price is uh, sharply down and uh, also uh, funding is not enough. And uh, uh, 
uh, target is uh, uh, she mentioned the trade demonstration project, and also the uh, target is a coal only coal power plant. So that uh, many many uh, uh, I think that the uh, reason so uh, firstly uh, Europe's uh, experience is a uh, fail of the CCS, but uh, after that. Uh, second down is uh, 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 brightness of the uh, CCUS and the uh, change mind to uh, focus on the uh, industry sectors like the cement, hydrogen, and the bio biofuels, uh, something like uh, uh, negative emissions, and also the uh, so uh, uh, now, and also a uh, uh, number of the uh, project is. Uh, 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 just just a uh, few uh, uh, project and so that uh, now is uh, uh, I think that Europe is now uh, going to the road going going to unload to success success of the uh, CCUS. so that uh, that is a very very uh, uh, useful information and uh, reference and the feedback for the uh, Asian region because the, uh, we, we, we will start to deploy the uh, deployment of uh, CCUS. But anyway, it's, uh, uh, I summarized the uh, uh, Chris uh, uh, presentation is uh, st uh, strong uh, po uh, policy support, uh, willingness that uh, is uh, very important and also the allocate some budget and uh, uh, develop, uh, development of the uh, project, also is a set up the project is very important. And uh, research and knowledge sharing is actually uh, support the uh, deployment of the uh, CCS. Then uh, end of the day, as uh, it will be a shift, shifting to the uh, final uh, commercialization is a private activities. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chris, for your presentations. And uh, Mr. Preof, uh, Preof uh, 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 introduced us the uh, ZEP uh, zero emission uh, platform. It is uh, similar to the uh, ACN, but uh, uh, scale is uh, quite different. Then uh, looking at the uh, uh, institutional chart of the uh, uh, ZEP, uh, there are uh, 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 consist of the uh, uh, several working group. Then uh, looking at ACN, only one secretariat and uh, one advisory group. So that uh, I think uh, uh, CCS is uh, consists of several different uh, issues and uh, uh, technologies. So that uh, set up the uh, several working group is very, very uh, smart and uh, very good idea so that uh, in near future, <laughs> Uh, as a secretari secretariat of the uh, ACN, uh, we'd like to set up the uh, uh, several working group uh, under the uh, ACN. It's a uh, very good uh, ideas, and uh, thank you very much, it's, uh, Mr. Preop. And uh, also, oh, again, this uh, uh, strong uh, political support, political issue, uh, is, uh, uh, willingness is very important. For example, uh, so that uh, set up the uh, climate law, it's, it's very very strong uh, under the uh, European Green Deal. It's uh, uh, also uh, in in Asia region, uh, we really need the uh, this kind of uh, strong political support to the uh, climate uh, to the uh, zero emission or uh, climate change. And uh, also uh, now at ZEP is uh, conducting the uh, uh, market ready uh, CCS project, uh, around the 40 project, and uh, set up the uh, plan and uh, set up the uh, roadmap to 2030. So that uh, ZEP is a uh, uh, kind of the uh, elder brother of the uh, AC. <laughs> so that. <laughs> uh, we, we uh, look at the uh, brothers' uh, uh, activities, then uh, uh, in, uh, incorporate your, your good uh, ideas activities into the, uh, our Asian activities. Uh, so that, uh, thank, you, thank you very much. And uh, uh, one uh, comment to the uh, uh, Juho san. Juho san is uh, uh, very, uh, raises a very important thing. So why do you deploy the uh, CCUS, uh, CCS? I think that uh, uh, according to the uh, two presenters, 
firstly, uh, EU is focused on the uh, coal power plant, but now change to the industrial activities like uh, cement, uh, iron steel, and uh, hydrogen. But, but because the uh, Europe, Europe is uh, easy to de uh, decide uh, to shut down of the uh, coal power plant. But uh, in Asia region, uh, especially in ASEAN countries, not easy to stop, stop, use, stop using the uh, uh, coal power plant. So that uh, Asia is, uh, still uh, continue to use the uh, coal, coal, coal power plant by the 2040 or 2050. In this regard, uh, we, we uh, Asia region is really need CCUS for the uh, uh, power, power coal power plant to reduce the uh, CO2 emission from the uh, coal power plant. So that uh, maybe background is a different between the Asia and uh, uh, Europe and also uh, uh, purpose of the CCS is also quite different in Asia and uh, uh, Europe, 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 European countries. So that uh, maybe it's a, a different situation. So uh, uh, very much appreciate the, the uh, uh, European understanding of the Asia, Asia uh, specific uh, uh, situations. But anyway, it's a uh, uh, final concluding remarks. My, uh, my con concluding remarks is, uh, but anyway, uh, COP26 uh, compromise to that, uh, compromise that the uh, coal power plant uh, gradually phase out uh, to the 2050, not rapidly phasing out. So in this regard, uh, role of CCS is very, very important and uh, significant and uh, so that uh, uh, in, 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 in order to deploy the uh, CCS in uh, Asia region, uh, ACN is surely contribute to the uh, uh, deployment of the CCS in the Asia region through the, uh, uh, our, our activities, the knowledge sharing, research studies, and also the uh, uh, starting of the uh, uh, pilot project. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my uh, conclusion remarks to and uh, back to the uh, uh, Pumi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kimra Sensei, for your uh, wrap up as well as a very nice closing remark. And uh, thank you for all speakers, uh, particularly Harasan, Juho San, Chris San. P. Olisan, Dr. Saleh, for your valuable, valuable knowledge sharing at this conference. Also a big thank for all advisory group member, member and supporting member, and all participants who spend your valuable time to attend this conference. Today's conference is very successful and we are very grateful for your participation and support to this conference. With this, let me announce that the conference is officially closed and we wish you a very good afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, member of the same, same, thank you very much. You, Ho san thank you. Chris, thank, thank you. you. Thank so you so much. Yes, thank, thank, you. thank you. So, thank you. thank you, Saleh. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you, Ho san thank you so much, uh, Chris and Pia.